and action and welcome everybody this is bmp weekly episode 218 we we had a two week break unfortunately uh, because of a unfortunate recancellation of things it's okay it's okay things happen yeah. life yeah. life happens and then we adjust but it's okay as we are back it is 18th of uh, september uh, episode 218 18th of september so, you know what are what are the odds so, you know the numbers are aligning i don't know yeah so now yeah. we need to do new episode every day to stay aligned <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> or wait another month true true that's fair uh no uh so in the vmp weekly i always talk about the latest microsoft 365 areas and typically have a visitor in place and then we jump in the articles of what has happened within the last week with the microsoft and community site so please use hashtag vmp weekly as in the twitter and that's our x whatever we call that and so we know what what, what people are writing and publishing and all of that in in x you use the x tags now is that is that the word I don't, I don't know i don't know i just really don't know. <laughs> the app formerly known as twitter Yes, uh, and this week uh, we have Kasper joining us from Denmark. Uh, we did have actually a bit of a geography on where he is located, but no, we didn't get that for recorded. So it's pretty close to Billen, Bill, Bill, what is it? Bill, Bill Lund. Bill Lund, uh, which is the the, loca- the Lego location and the Lego headquarters of the world. So yes, at least closer than where I am. So if nothing else, <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know. So for me, I think that's twelve hundred kilometers, maybe a bit more. I think. That's actually a good question. We need to, yeah, let's who's yes. closer. Important yes. things in life. Yes. How far Important. are you located away from Lego? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it's interesting. I well, I know no idea why we're having this discussion, but the Legos are being more and more used by the adults as well. I actually have quite a few Legos, but then I started uh, buying them because you know I'm running out of space, so there's no <laughs> logical location. Wife doesn't like. Why? Why is this in here? Why? 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 <laughs> I, mean, I so. see behind you the screen. Like you can just remove the screen and create true space for yourself. True, but yeah, but every now and then I still have this opportunity of you know playing around, around with something. So yeah, around I could actually do that. That's true. Mm. That's hmm. Well, need to yeah, yeah. And yeah, then you can move the sound panels down so that they are still st- stuck be- on the wall below the screen, and then you can, you have uh, sh- uh, shelf space for your sets. In the BMP Weekly, I always talk about the latest on the office designs at your yes, home. bring so... your <laughs> interior, bring your room, and we'll give you free advice like how to uh, <laughs> exactly. d- design your space. Uh, yes, <laughs> my six square week. meters are pretty <laughs> full right now, but it's okay. Anyway, um, are those, by the way, Legos behind of you as well? So now that I'm yes. actually wondering, they yes. are. So That's I've what got, I thought. I've got, uh, these are two modular buildings there, and I've got yeah. two more there. Okay, can, there we go. See, see that? And you have the chaos, of course. Yeah, chaos. Yes, of course. Chaos is course. a place. <laughs> of course. I even have have art behind me. I don't know if you know the commercial. There was a commercial from IKEA about art. Yep. No. No. Nope. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's clearly a art. A giraffe. Okay. There was, this, uh, there was there was a, a commercial where there was a burglar. And and the uh, the person uh, where he um, broke in had this like on a column, right? So the guy's like, "Oh my god, like this has to be so expensive!" So he stole that, and that that thing was like ten bucks or something. <laughs> but but it looks arty. So this yeah, is my true. piece Fair of point. art. Fair point. Fair point. IKEA art is always good. So because nobody else has never bought it or seen it, right? So. <laughs> No, but it is have. actually quite nice. That is actually not yeah. too bad. So, giraffe. Got yeah, it. Giraffe. Like Microsoft Craft. I think it is. I think it is a giraffe. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, uh, from this team, let's actually jump to the interview with Casper Larson um, and talk about a bit about his work and and his com- contributions on a community and and all of that stuff. So let's jump on the interview and we'll come back on the articles right after that. Excellent. So let's let's uh, let's jump into the interview. So let's get started. Uh, welcome, Casper, uh, to the BMP Weekly episode, apparently two hundred and nineteen. Uh, we're recording. Well, it doesn't matter when we are actually recording this. Few days before we are recording the article, so this we might be switching shirts um, between the <laughs> intros and articles. <laughs> we change clothes. We change clothes yeah. for each segment. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Magic. Anyway, so Casper, let's start with you. Who are you, and what do you do for a living? 
So my name is Kasper Larsen, and I've been a consultant in this line of work for since uh, 2000. Before that, that, I was actually a master mariner and uh, traveled the high seas with uh, Merse Line. But uh, that figured out that the family life and being away for three, four months in a row, that was just not uh, optimal. So I changed and I got myself a bachelor in, in CS and uh, started working for Merse again. And um, during the years, I have uh, done a lot of funny stuff like uh, client server development and stuff like that, uh, moving uh, fr from uh, mainframes to client server solutions. And But then in 2009, I moved into a consultancy and um, we were doing a lot of uh, stuff around uh, collaboration and something called SharePoint popped up on the radar. What? Uh, yeah, well, it was just some Never stuff. Never heard of well. it. Yes. No, no. <laughs> Uh, at that time, it was a royal pain in the behind uh, sometimes, and I have still nightmares about the uh, STS uh, commands. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that was uh, that was back in the good old days, as you yeah. kind of called that. And uh, but we had a lot of uh, SharePoint on prem at that time. That was 2007, I think it was the first one we had at uh, that time. And then we had 10, and then 13 happens, and things get a lot of uh, got a lot better. And uh, I started looking into using search a lot. That was like around 2013, but that was really uh, mature. I can guess uh, well, we had the fast engine in incorporated into the into the engine, and that uh, improved a lot of stuff. And um, but at that time, we didn't have any culture around sharing anything. We was just hoarding our knowledge basically, because if you had knowledge, you could you could stick to it. That was like a, I was all sort of like a mental IP. If you had it, you you got you, you really made sure that nobody else got it. it perhaps within internal in the company, but you're not sharing with anybody. Uh, that was just not that was just not the culture at that time, at, at least here in, in Denmark and in that company. Uh, but then we moved to online and things started to change and Microsoft as well started to change and we got a lot more open and we see where well, we started to not consider open source like a cancer. It was something that was actually done yep. and uh, it became become more and more popular. And around, I think it was 2016, I started looking into um, uh, PNP provisioning because we have, of course, we had our own provisioning engine. Everybody of course, we did. Everybody, 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 had, had, everybody one. had one. Microsoft Traces to what, what, provisioning, yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. And what happens if you have your own provisioning engine? The people who actually develop it, uh, they either move to a new role or they yes. quit the company and you find build another one. To work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so, so basically, we had we had a provisioning engine that we couldn't support anymore uh, yep. because the the guys wasn't there anymore. So we we're looking into what can we, because should we could consider uh, building our own one again? Or we just failed with, a, with this one? Should we try to fail again? Or should we look uh, to what the community had to, to offer? And that was uh, where I started looking into the PNP provisioning. And I, at that time, I wasn't any, I wasn't considering sharing anything really because I was just, uh, I was using what everybody else was providing. That was very kind of them, but I wasn't um, doing my own part. I wasn't doing the part that I was supposed to do uh, as far as, as contributing myself. But that changed around, that was, I think, in Prague in uh, 2019. I saw Erwin van Hoenen mm -hmm. doing uh, something on PNP PowerShell. And that sort of like sort of sw sw switched uh, something in, in my brain that was, we can do. I can do that as well because I, not because Evan isn't a Superman because he absolutely is. But <laughs> still, there was a lot of other people I, who I said that they contrib <laughs> contributed as, as well, <laughs> and that made me consider. Well, perhaps I can do that as well because I can't code for. Well, well I, I do a lot of PMP PowerShell development, but I can't code any C, C plus plus, or C sharp anymore. Uh, and uh, TypeScript is completely foreign to me. But I could contribute by doing some uh, community work, and I can do by updating the documentation, which everybody yep. knows documentation is just so fun. Everybody is volunteering to do that. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, or, or not. I'm not sure. Um, so, so that was sort of like where I saw that I could contribute and, uh, and do my part. So, And that's what I've been doing um, ever since I joined the PNP Modern Search uh, project and the PNP uh, Script Samples. 
Yep. Uh, because well, PMP scripts have stats in PMP PowerShell, and that's where I, I that's sort of like my hammer. Everything I see looks like <laughs> something I can whack the PMP <laughs> PowerShell. So, uh, so, so that's why I contribute on those two um, projects. And uh, uh, lately, I am um, doing a lot of support on the PMP uh, modern uh, search uh, repository, and. I could see a pattern uh, emerge uh, when we were looking at what kind of uh, support requests that we got because people reported a bug. Uh, and then we started thinking into it, and sometimes they were either right, it actually was a bug, so that happened. Sometimes it was a, 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 an enhancement request, actually, because it was something that we didn't do, but perhaps we would do sometime in, in the future. But often it was actually just a mistake. It mm -hmm. was people who were new to the system, who were new to search in general, perhaps, and they didn't know how to verify their data, how to verify that they have mapped the properties as they were supposed to do and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wanted, I wanted to go and go and go a little bit back. You mentioned the transform or mentioned you went through from not sharing anything and being really protective of the IP and that being kind of the culture around you. So like in a way that makes sense that you adopted that, but then you had that change and you changed the way you think. How did you go, like how how did it feel and how do you see the way you work now comparing to the way you used to work? Like well, what are the, the benefits you got, your colleagues got, your employer got, all of that? Like how, how did you experience that? Well, of course I, I had to spend a little more time working but I have two kind of. I have I have my work work, and then what my wife calls my for fun work, uh, which is what happens after office hours. And yep. uh, I, I had to spend some more time doing that. But it also changed the way that I uh, pick up knowledge and how I store my knowledge, but I, how how I codify my knowledge because I can have all the knowledge I I, I have already. But they, as long as it's stuck in my head, it doesn't really do anything. So now I started blocking a lot. Sometimes mm. it's just small stuff. It's just, well, how does this work? Just yeah. put it in writing. So in, in the order, well, I guess you've also tried the, the experience where you're actually Googling for something and then you found it. It's a nice sample that showed how to, to do this yep. or explain this. And then you yep. found out it was your own notes from like 10 years ago. Yeah, that's yeah, all the time. Every every single so that was like, who time. has written yeah, this? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is this guy? Oh, yeah. this is so good. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's, that's my own <laughs> it, it happens. So, I mean, so, so that's one of the, the things I do a lot now is that I just try to put it in writing also yep. because well, my memory is not uh, capable of <laughs> containing that, uh, that much knowledge anymore. I kind of, kept, kind of forget. And so uh, it's nice to put, to, to put it down in some way I can actually retrieve it again. Yeah, and I, I don't to. think that's about the you as, as such as Casper. I think it's it's the amount of work, uh, amount of information, and and what we actually deal with oh, is, yeah. is much bigger. So coming back on on your historical things, like when we started in 2007, we released a version of a product in every single three years. You were able to take a one yeah. piece of a product and get specialized on it, and then another piece, and another piece, and another piece, and then came the new features and capabilities. Do, so, no, no, no. So the way the way it went down is you would buy this thing called a book. It was very <laughs> thick. True, true. You would read it true. end to end, and you would know okay. everything about everything there is to know about the thing. Vesa oh, has one. See. Do I? Like, oh, oh my I, God! I, he printed yeah, a yeah. thing. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, it's small yeah. book. It's a really yeah, it's a, really it's a, it's a, small book. Uh, but I, 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 I book. just to call out the the people. Is it the who are one XML? No. No, no. no but same people, same person. So. Oh yeah, there we go. Program. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder how and, much and of course. that book is still relevant. Where's the writer? What's the writer? There's the writer. That, that's what I was actually yeah. finding. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that is a good good example. So this is uh, I. But to be fair, I, I thank you, Paolo, by the way, uh, on on uh, pro providing this. I can't remember. Maybe in some of the conferences he's provided this. This is from 2000 and uh, da, 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 da. 18, 19, uh, 16. 16. So, there you go. Yes. So now we're eight years on on forward on this, and yes. There's some code and all of that stuff as well, but it, the question is how up to date is it? Um, yeah. And then that is an interesting transition on on the amount of information and explosion of the information which we need to deal with. And also the right? pace, the pace of and change. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's also where uh, back back in the day when I started because, uh, doing SharePoint uh, consultancy, I, I had to sort of cover the entire breadth of the product. Yes. And today, 
I'm very, Good very luck with that. of my focus <laughs> because all of the other stuff, I just can't keep up with the, the, the fire hose yeah. of information that we get from, from Microsoft or from the, from the community yeah, yeah. because well, I, it's that's too, way too much. So you really have to focus your, 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 your endeavor and, and just work on that area and yeah. hope that it's not get the irrelevant anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> but also, yeah, but also like the way things are now is because we're in a cloud, you get like your core area of expertise. Let's pick search. And you want to build some something on search. Well, you also get the, the nascent topics like whatever you build that needs to run somewhere. So you will need uh, compute storage. You you yep. also need auth because you it's not anonymous. Yeah. So like from this one little thing, you get this huge, and, yeah. and, and all yeah. of these things is a topic of itself. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Because like you can run serverless, you can run Docker, and all of these things are again a topic of their own. How do you scale, yeah. support, log them, manage them, monitor them? Like, is that these a true are thing? again topics by themselves? Have the yeah. industry actually done and and done this to itself that we had made our life more difficult, or how, what has happened? Because you might think that why wouldn't we agree as an industry that let's focus on these things and these other ways of doing things? No, no, no. Here's another one, and here's another one, and here's Pendulum. another one. Pendulum. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, like, sometimes it's just uh, basically yeah. a replacement because well, in the info right. class, if you remember that, and the the SharePoint designer and all of that stuff, we can still. To, uh, we, we can of course do the same. We just have to do it in another way. So that's just right. replacing right. one technology with another technology to yep. basically cover the same business requirements, right? Right. sort of. The, uh, the but user requirements we, are still the same, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, and also back in the day when we had uh, SharePoint on prem, which we still do, and I still try, I still got requests from <laughs> support from like. 2013 SharePoint so stuff like that was just running on the server somewhere underneath the disk somewhere. We have the same, but now it's just running in the cloud. And it's just, it's another way to do it. I think it's very more elegant and more approachable, but still it's kind of doing the same thing. You mentioned you mentioned that way back when you were on, on boats, right? On ships. I, like way back when we had a, a customer who actually had a, a a fleet too, and on every boat they would run a a, a farm, yeah, SharePoint I farm. This. I remember they said that, <laughs> right? And they would yes. have to right because like because they like the connection that they got like the latency was too high, so they couldn't use yeah. satellite phone and all of that to get access, and they wanted to have access to all the you know the plans, the documents, or whatever. So they like every vessel would run. A server farm, on server farm. A share, share, yes. a SharePoint farm, and then the, when 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 they came back, they would sync. And like imagine <laughs> like the caveats around that, like something has been changed, and how do you sync that? And that was like before the whole um, idea of co-authoring in uh, like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, right? So it wasn't trivial to get <laughs> no. sync stuff back. Like there was like like there were people like spending days to kind of merge conflicts and get the latest data but it was really interesting approach like how far we would go and also the fact, like there was, there was this interesting quote that i read the other day where uh it was something al al along the line that even if you're not in it software is a part of your business yeah right so basically like how like let's say 50 years back who would have thought that fishermen or whatever else related to boats like would ever get you know computers like it was all about you know ship mechanics seamen craft and all that mm. nowadays like you cannot think of it a different way right no no it's, it's true and it, it, it's, it's everywhere so if, even if uh, we have a system here in denmark when the, uh, the trucks comes to pick up our garbage for instance computers um, yeah yeah, Computer. true. Every when they come to pick up my garbage, there's also a, a, a reader on the truck that actually checks the meter on my water supply and on my heating. Yep. So that's the way they actually pick up that information. I don't have to provide them anything. They'll just nice. each week they'll get new data, a new set of data really? from each house they visit. Yeah, that's just yeah. I think yeah. I think here they attach them basically to internet. So uh, like, there's here. nobody coming Mobile alone. Network. Yeah, yeah. They just same get here. the data out. It's like huh? okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is interesting that the, the thing what I was actually quickly trying to research. I remember vividly back in 
uh, when I started in Microsoft, which has been a while, um, there was a book, it's I think it's written years. by Bill. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> with, book written by Bill Gates, or at least he was associated to it. And it, that was basically the visionary on how things will be. And it all was based on that fundamental, you know, thinking that internet connectivity will be across the world. Um, and coming back on the, the boats and those servers that in the farms, uh, boat farm, we're still not quite there. Now, given the, the, the SpaceX, SpaceX and the, the Starlinks, yes, we're now finally starting to get to the mm. moment where anywhere within the world, you can actually have a reliable and fast enough internet connectivity. But it's been like, 84 years or whatever the, the saying is yeah. uh, for finally getting there because a lot of the challenges what we keep on tackling is about the fact that well do i have a reliable network connectivity even in my case in here i'm finally getting a fiber which is <laughs> and by the way i'm not living in a forest i'm living really close to downtown so but it's it's just you know society and locations and all of that stuff it's it's kind of interesting how how it works so it's all That's based on that requirement of having that what is it 24 7 reliable internet connectivity working around us um, and then we're able I to sleep do... at night at night like my connection could go down and i wouldn't notice <laughs> well <laughs> yes you, but your, your computer might, is getting up very mad at you when in the morning if they can't connect to the internet for some reason yes, my yes. computer is <laughs> off at and at night and those are the other day i had a chat with uh colleagues on my team and they found it an, an owner right so am i the only one they found it really weird that I turn off my mobile phone at night. Am I the only one? Or is it like an a age gap? I don't know. I don't know. Mine is on silent all the time. Exactly. So <laughs> well, I mean, like, mine is off. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. off. It's, it's, it's out. Now, yeah. I don't sleep right next to my phone anyway, but I, I, I'm kind of a, a bit at least aware of the amount of you know radiation and everything else what what the phones and everything else are doing but but by definition my phone is staying in a different room not really because of being super scared of things but it's more on hey why would i carry it with me when i'm when i'm sleeping yeah, but well, well, I, I had a few numbers that, it's that on. Would, if, they, if, they, if they called me the phone would actually ring uh, that was my son and my daughter but if they were yeah, yeah. Uh, in, the, in town and they needed help for some reason yeah. or if uh, we have like a, a national emergency or what those those special numbers but uh yeah it's it, it can it can be in the kitchen when right, right next to the door I, I guess i will hear it if if it just goes off during oh. the night but uh, yeah sure. that's the only reason why it's actually on because well i don't check so. Well, I guess then then I would be really the last one on the road. Like, yeah, everybody left. Yes. Like, hey, where is yes. everybody? Where is what's happening? <laughs> Let me put my phone on and have a look. Oh, I on. have a great story about that. Oh my god! Back when I was at school, we had this one day we had exercise apparently, and you know, like the fire sense and sense safety. Yep. It, like, it was just like it was unannounced, obviously, because that that's the whole point, right? I was at the a restroom doing my 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 my, my I think and there was alarm but it's like it it went off earlier so maybe you know they were doing some tests so I I I didn't think anything of it so I'm doing my <laughs> thing you know coming out and there is like everything's empty and there I see these two folks I've never seen earlier and this one uh guy from our school all with the uh fests you know says uh, says in, in the uh the safety vest and you saw them like look at each other like <laughs> and then one guy taking note <laughs> apparently they evacuated the whole floor and nobody thought of checking the bathrooms <laughs> there we go wah, wah, wah. so if, if they if they learn something well <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one yeah and but Luckily, at least those people were there because you can only imagine you're like, where is everybody? What, what's happening within this world? What? What? Well, what? I mean, if there's no, yeah, zombies, right? Like the end of the, yeah. like, yeah, the last one <laughs> yeah, of yeah. us. Yeah, I've actually shared this few times in the past as well. People can't remember anyway, but I, I said, I'm, I've been on a plane which is leaving from JFK, sorry, then Seattle to JFK right after the snowstorms in the US. And that that was so weird. I was re really seriously in Stephen King movie when you're walking into the you know security lines in Seattle, nobody oh, you're walking nobody in. Left. And then it's like, except the, the people who basically do your back. And then you walk to the 
plane and the airport is completely <laughs> empty. It's like, what's happening? Why is oh, that yeah. mist coming? What is that storm? <laughs> 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 Yeah, right. yeah. They anyway. remind me of the the one flight that I had from the US to Europe, where they basically had to spread us across the plane because it was it was empty, and they wanted they wanted to balance out the load. Oh yeah. So like people would have like there's maybe like 20 people on like big plane, so basically like everybody would have the whole row, like the whole, yeah. Yeah. the whole like across the lanes too. You could just yeah. spread out, and there was like nobody, so they would like move us across the plane, like. Yeah, so we see that you're talking to each other, but you gotta move because we need to spread the love. Like, okay. Okay. Fine. You put them in isolation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. reason. <laughs> now let's root back on on uh, back to today and and what's happening yes. in 2022. So now, Casper, uh, you said that you're working in a, as a consultant. What does that actually mean in practice? What 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 does your team days look like? What do you do? Uh, mostly, I do uh, provisioning and uh, information architecture in relating in relation to the that provisioning, um, and then I do my third thing. So uh, wait, uh, we're, you, we're talking about provisioning, as in the same provisioning as in the BMP provisioning. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, that wow. and then something <laughs> else because well, of course, of course, <laughs> well, there's all, always some small uh, areas which is not covered by the PMP provisioning engine. Yep. So I have to do something special to, in order to fix that. And in that relation, I, I use, uh, of course, uh, Azure uh, storage a lot, uh, the queue especially, and uh, Azure Functions and or uh, Drupal Functions or Runbox, yep. uh, whatever is appropriate at uh, that specific customer. Can we talk about a bit about the the from a business perspective? So the, the we're talking about the PMP provisioning and 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 well, it's it's mind-boggling how successful that one <laughs> random concept came to be, which is really cool. Uh, but what is the business case? Why do you need to have provisioning? Why are customers willing to pay for provisioning? Well, where does this come from? Why isn't the product good enough? I guess the product is good enough as far it goes as you want something generic. If, for, for instance, if you look at the ones that uh, you're offered when you create a new site, you have a lot of these different templates. Yeah. Each of these templates have to be configured for a specific purpose. So for instance, uh, what I do a lot is uh, right now I'm working for, for a large uh, company, uh, of, of, uh, of, um, government co- uh, contract company, and they have specific requirements. So they actually have to do like a check-in and check-out on, on files due to uh, government requirements. That's kind of like old technology, so that has to be especially shoehorned into the existing solution, because yeah. that's just something that is unique for their specific yeah. purpose. So that's yeah. where we use that kind of um, technology in order to specify, ta- ta- tailor the solution to what the customer requires. And they do that, like, they spin up like uh, 50 sites a day just for this and they have specific requirements for each kind of template so we have like 10 or 15 templates with them and then they of course sometimes they change the business requirements so they i've been working with them i'm approaching nine years now uh just catering for that specific needed so uh it's it's it's, it's a business case that never dies basically because they continue building railroads for some reason uh, and they also always have to build new bridges and re, uh, repurpose uh, existing lines and so on and so forth and they have to keep track on that so that's just it's a, ba- ah, it's a business it. specific it's business yeah. business yeah. Ah, ah, keep yeah. track of it they need to keep track of it <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah um, so uh, and, th- and they do that and other people have similar requirements because they always have the, those templates that Microsoft provide they can never fulfill the requirement of each yes. and every business because it's just a framework but yep. in, as far as I consider it's uh, a lot of samples they are uh, very uh, visual and they are good inspiration for what we can do otherwise and we also have like the starter kit for instance um, there are overfields there um, is heading that project and I was actually supposed to do some search related stuff for him and then I got sidetracked so it happens yep. um, but that's, Squirrel. that's what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where we, we get the inspiration say, well, this is what is provided out of the box. How can we tailor that to your specific need? Yeah. Uh, yeah. As and far as information architecture and hence how the site is designed, how the library is designed, which content types yeah. and so all that, all that jazz. Yeah. In order and, to and it get comes to the back on the, 
yeah, and so and it goes, comes back on on. Okay, so this is close, but I need to just uh, adjust that one and that one and that one. Okay, okay, and and the I think the beauty of provisioning automation is that you can actually justify that because it saves time, saving time rather than user going click 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 click. You're saving time, so therefore you're saving money, and therefore you can actually evaluate the return of investment uh, for automating things. Uh, because yeah, that's where it just all the, the fact that if you give people like a, a, a fifty. Uh, bullet point um, uh, guide to how to set up the site by taking, Correct. taking, taking. Correct. They will miss some settings. Is yes. It going to make the same Correct. site each time because somewhere right. it messes up right. somewhere. So right. it's just that. that no, you can't and as the, as they mess it up, there might be legal implications out of that setting not being Ooh, actually yes. present, like saving versionings, and then the company is in a big problem. So, um, so the, the, it's not just you know we want to simplify processes for the sake of simplifying and things. There might be legal implications um, because of those settings. So that's actually a good point as well. So another thing that I want to ask, and maybe there's something that I totally missed, but just. You 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 said right that there was time where everybody built their own engine to, to create stuff, and we kind of move, moved away from that. Doesn't that decrease the opportunity that you had as a partner and kind of the USP you've got distinguishing yourself from others in the market? Because like if everybody will use the same thing, one it means probably that you can build less hours because you just use a thing and it's there, and two it's everybody like. Everybody has is doing the same thing. So how do you distinguish yourself from us? So how does the what I'm trying to ask is how does the ubiquity of things that we build in the open for everybody change your life as a partner and the way you look at creating the business for yourself? I think it'll just it, it, with the comp uh, the competition is just remains the same. It's just on a higher level because we don't have to do the bolts and knots and all oh, that stuff to build the yep. engine. We have to provide some additional value on top of that. Uh, just like uh, just like we have several different offerings that competes with the SharePoint or Teams, and but they all have different ways to achieve the same. And if you know if you know the number of, of consultancy companies in the world that actually is all built on top of Microsoft 365, we there's a staggering a number a number of people who are doing this, but we each do it a little bit different and cater to a specific uh, a business area or uh, have specific services that we can provide. So I don't see any reason to believe that moving uh, the, the ladder a little bit up and 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 actually start building uh, well we're all standing on, on the shoulders of giants right so we just we, we give the customer more by don't have to reinvent the wheel for each and every customer yeah. um and some people have specific needs and they built on top of like for instance uh, sharepoint modern uh, no, sorry sorry uh, modern search they add additional capabilities and they keep it for themselves. That's fair, I guess. That's that's that choice. And other people, they actually contribute into the project uh, in order to make sure that somebody else will actually maintain their code in the future. Uh, so, so there's a lot of opportunities there. And I, some people do that on purpose. So that they contribute on purpose. That's their mentality. That we that's the way we do it. When we enhance this uh, existing project. We do it for everybody, and some people keep it to themselves. And recently, I've seen more people failing with co that custom solution than people who failed by, do by using what's publicly available and then just build on top of that or configure that in a specific way, uh, configure that in a specific way rather than build their own. So, one now, of the oh, you want to go first, or you want you want me? You're to go yeah, for free. Okay. 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 No. One of the uh, concerns that I hear a lot is that when you use something that you don't own by yourself, you create a dependency. What if it doesn't do what you need? What if it breaks? What do you do then, right? Because like, so yeah. do you like in order for you to truly be able to adopt it as a part of your offerings? Do you need to build domain knowledge of the tool you use, or is there other way to kind of ensure continuity in case? something is doesn't work as expected or you miss something in there how how do you address that aspect of it i think it's actually compared to to vendor buying uh login sorry vendor login where you well, whoever provided that they are out of business so unless even even in the best of worlds you get a copy of that 
uh, source code from a vault somewhere because that's stated in Hopefully. the contract that you have to Hopefully. have a copy of. But you, yes. th then your hand use uh, several uh, several thousand files uh, on a floppy disk or on, on a, a USB <laughs> stick, and that's yes. it. And good luck for it figuring out how that works. Yes, Whereas not to mention if you does build it even build on something that's yes. publicly? <laughs> yes. It's sort of like, but. If I've made something special for one of my customers and I decide not to work anymore and I just retire, the likelihood that somebody else will pick up that uh, project and bring it further is pretty high because it's all based on on a standard. Oh, so it's, yeah. it's 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 we are not that unique, of course. If I made something, somebody else can take it. Yeah. and move on because you're building on top, top of, of that, that, that. because you're building on top of something what people are aware of rather than building from scratch right yeah, so perhaps 75 percent of, of of the of the new uh, the solution i provide them is new that's yeah. my contribution the rest of it is that's something that i yeah. built on on top of yeah. what are already there this really reminded me on the, the question what Walter was asking was was actually actually spot on so i i I used to be, a, I'm not just a Redmond person, uh, so to say I used to be a consultant and did quite a lot of consulting at my time. That's why I'm recovering consultant, even still <laughs> in my Twitter profile. Um, people who know what that means know what it means. Anyway, so <laughs> fun. Uh, that that basically, I always chuckled on, on massive projects, on the mental mindset for some of the providers. And again, we don't need to name any companies and, and that's an industry standard, but the industry standard basically is, People deliver you the software and the project and everything else. And then they come to the customer and say, okay, sign off that we delivered what we promised in the contract. Now, the challenge with this one brings is that, well, okay, so the customer bought expertise and knowledge and skills from this other company. How could the customer who doesn't know how it works and how has it been built to the sign off that it actually works in the best possible quality way, quality way, quality way, as based on agreement, because they don't have that expertise. So well, now, but how then is we, it and different from you buying a car? Can you it's, truly it audit isn't, it isn't. that your car has Absolutely. been built up to spec? It looks so, nice. Then it drives. We we also see uh, then customers like this hiring other cons consultants, which are then evaluating what the other consultant team is mm -hmm. doing. It's it's an interesting industry challenge. So how could because we're customer a lot of customers, especially in Europe, especially in Europe, I think the, the pendulum is moving back again. We're outsourcing those skill sets. So IT was everything was outsourced. So now if you only have business expertise within your slim area, how could you validate what is being delivered because you don't have that expertise? It's a really interesting challenge. You need to and trust it's, it's of also, course it's also a choice whether you want to have the capabilities Correct. to to, to actually receive the, the, the solution that you get, or you're just hoping for the best. Uh, yes. And that's yes. why you also have companies who uh, put out a tender and they receive what they get, and then they don't ever see that supplier again. And True. where we have other True. cases where people say, well, both, both on the supplier side, we, we, we would like that. It's just, it's not a delivery, it's a partnership. So right. we're, we're exactly. in for the long run. Exactly. So we also exactly. want the support contract and stuff like that. So you continue uh, that, then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it, so, so. It's, an, it's an interesting business so model. And again, coming back on buying a car is, is already, well, the abstraction, you don't buy a, a tier of tires and then a wheel, and then you put it on by yourself, you actually get the car because the abstraction is already so mm. hard, high. And of course, part of the IT, if we, if we transition from past 20 years, we've been heading to a direction where the abstraction layers are more and more. It's not in the car level still, right? Well, so, yes, but then on the other hand, like you still have, you know, the big recall actions where brake pads are wrong or there's yeah, something absolutely. else. So absolutely. there was a fault that's snuck in and somebody yes. found it after yes. the cars have been shipped. So even though, We've built cars for over the years. We have standardized sure. procedures, sure. quality checks, safety tests. There are still sure. issues that sneak in despite the best intentions, right? So, and then there are yeah, institutions and, and, and organizations what... yeah, who validate those cars and sign them off for delivery, which we don't have in software, right? So because in software industry, you typically do the contract directly with the provider. Of we there do. Is no F5, people... it works on my machine. There you go. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> it drives. Ship it. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, it is an interesting. So, that, so yeah, sorry, where you have the, where, where you have the, uh, a, a customer uh, supplier relationship, what we call hit and run, where you just yep. deliver the software and then you'll 
you yes. out of the door, you you, yes. you you don't see them anymore. If that had been a car, well, you find out say, two 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 uh, two two months after you purchase it that the door falls off. Oh, yep. Tough tough luck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You bought it. Here's, exactly. Screwdriver, exactly. screw, <laughs> nuts and bolts. <laughs> yes. Go fix it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So will we ever get to the similar level of a standardization and the quality within the other industries in software development? Um, I think we've done this we will interesting get transition. In some. I think we'll yeah. get in some, especially when it comes to, you know, business, like life critical things like airplanes. Yep. I think course. these of systems course. get way more screw, 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 scrutiny than like things like a web part that we build. It's like, okay, so the web part broke. So it's like at the end of the day, it's nothing else than accepting risks. Yep. Right. And it's not like you can you can physically like, you like yes you can try to avoid risk, but it's become so cost ineffective that at some point you will say you know what like what is the risk if we mm -hmm. will not be able to see the birthdays zero okay then it's you know if it breaks it's bad but it it will be fixed. Yeah. Even if you have business. Cases critical yeah, exactly. Even in those cases, you have mistakes sometimes. If you remember the Ariane 5 rocket that was uh, launched from uh, French Guiana, and when it reached a height of uh, 32,000 and something, yeah. well, that was, a, that was an integer overflow. Yeah, well, but like, even, even the same thing, like, was, it, was it with the, the, uh, the Boeing, the 777 MAX? 737 oh, yeah, MAX, seven yeah. Max. Yeah, yeah, it was a seven thing. seven seven. Yes, exactly. Even, even even on airplane, you know, where the risk is really high. Yep. People messed up. Yep. But yeah, the yes. corners didn't do good good enough tests. True. 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 So but it's, it's then, hard. <laughs> it, it, is, is, it is. It is. And and then of course again, this is the pendulum how we're doing. But I, I still vividly remember we we kind of choked about the good enough IT in the master certification program where I was training on the on in my past about that hey industry it's good enough IT it works I click a button it works and and with all the honesty we are heading more and more to the direction where well I click a button I don't care what it actually does it works done sign off uh, which, which is cost care. efficiency think, yeah yeah as well it's, it but just, it's it's, it's, it's again risks, managing right? risks exactly it's the yeah. risk management so and yeah. again it's the pendulum which moves from one direction as in we are heading to more good enough IT and then the quality and then the good enough IT and we try to balance it at somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's the distributed systems and client servers versus the monolith and all of that. And it's actually, it's it's so funny to see um, as a bit you know older or experienced person in IT who's seeing this transition. It's like monoliths are the new thing, and it's like yeah, we've kind of seen this in the past. Sure, that <laughs> yes. was where we came server from. Side <laughs> rendering. Rendering. Yeah, server rendering. side server rendering. Server side rendering. Client side exactly. rendering. Exactly. <laughs> So then again, we'll have this thing with code server goes, uh, side components, and they will send HTML. HTML, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Sorry, they're getting getting back on, on the open source ideas as well, compared to code quality, because I think, as far as I can see, on, on the modern search repository and also on the script samples repository, there's a lot of people who find bugs. Yep. Or quirks or features, depending on who you are. Undocumented asking. features. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Exactly. behaviors. <laughs> but but in, in, in its cases where I had no idea that anybody could even think about that. Yeah. And if you had that as a proprietary software, that would never, ever be right. discovered until something right. blows up or yeah. kind of crashes yeah. into yeah. a pillar or something like that. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's also one of the benefits uh, I see in, in, in using those pre-existing solutions. That's yep. uh, yeah. That gives so, them. not going to go into too much details on 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 this that this is, but it's it's been actually mind-boggling to see. We finally, because of many many reasons, we were finally get, uh, do the full automation of GitHub statistics and all of that stuff across multiple organizations, everything else, and generally in Microsoft 365 side. And the statistics are incredible related on uh, what are the repos which are the most widely viewed and accessed and engaged and all of that stuff versus the ones which are not. 
And the open source and community repos are in general much more widely accessed and used than the, the in quotes, the official ones. And that not that there's nothing wrong with the official ones, um, but it also comes back on the, the, the community able to contribute on the community mm -hmm. side and being able to provide more value and, and help on fixing things and accessing things. And that's a clear indication, obviously, on the usage as well of those uh, components. Um, in the case of the search web part, which Casper, you're helping on coordinating and having office hours, um, which we'll add on the notes on the office hours, definitely. And, and you can talk about, a bit about that one before we close up. Um, that's the most widely used web part in the world. Um, so we don't actually know how it's being used, but we know that instances being used in this many tenants um, because we don't do you know, uh, instrumentation in more detailed level because that would be a violation of data. But we do know how many times it's being loaded and on, on how many tenants with, that, with anonymously on you know, the tenant details. It's most widely used web part uh, as a custom web part which is available. Of course, first party web parts is different because those are Microsoft provided web parts. Um, but it is it's it's interesting. The numbers are just mind boggling um, on on how many thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of tenants are using something like the search and search web parts, uh, which which is basically Mikhail Svensson and, and Frank Cornu uh, originally created the whole thing, and then it has its supply for its own. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, as, um, as part of the, the 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 support that we do there, uh, I came to the realization that often we see people who are brand new to this, and they ask some questions which are hard to understand and they are hard to answer because their frame of reference is slightly off because they don't know how to frame their questions because they don't have the knowledge yet. And that's and then I took some inspiration from the the PMP community or what's the the, the, the getting started um, sessions that we have that was uh, hosted at that time at least by uh, David Warner and uh, Hugo Bernier, yep. Yep. where we where where I was introduced to how do you actually start contributing in this manner that the, we were supposing yep. how do you create your first PRs and all of that stuff good yep. stuff and. Actually being together and doing that online, seeing what they are doing, asking questions. So it's, it's almost as almost as good as being in the same room. It's, it's yep. close at least. Yep. That gave a lot more knowledge on a very, in a very short, uh, short time span compared to reading a blog or reading the documentation or yep. seeing, even seeing a video on, on YouTube or whatever where you publish that. So that's the reason why I decided to come up with uh, Modern Search uh, Office Hours. Uh, the name was coined, uh, was, uh, coined by Michael Svensson, actually. Uh, that's just where I, or some other people from the community, actually uh, offers people to have like a 15 minutes consultancy uh, gig. Yep. It, it, yep. it's, it's not, I will not build your intranet for you, no, but I will answer yep. your questions about Modern Search. Uh, and if you have an idea you would like to pitch, I can give you some feedback because I've done it a number of times, so I'm, I might know what I'm talking about in some cases. Um, <laughs> so that's an offering that we come, uh, we have today that we can actually each every second week where I have set aside an hour uh, of my time to just uh, support uh, new people in the in the in the, in the on, on the on the project. Um, and we can just we'll just have a one-to-one -one teams meeting, and they can present what their their, their challenge is, and I yep. can help them on with the the tooling and 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 knowledge and so forth. So uh, so far we've just done that once, and that that was a really uh, a good idea. I think there was uh, we had a four four uh, sessions, and one of them actually uh, didn't show up because time zone issues, I guess. Uh, yep. But the other three they get they get they got on with that uh, with that project because they just have some. They had some simple issue. For me, it's simple. For them, it was a complete uh, full stop uh, bug yep. because they didn't have the frame of reference so that I could actually uh, um, yep. see where the issue was. So, so, so I spent 15 minutes and they won. And the last time I heard from one of them uh, reported back saying they were done. Yep. That's that's, that's the kind of feedback I like to get. This just, sure. I'll, run, I'll run with it. We complete it. It's done. Thank you. Yep. And I, I have to say thank you, Casper, and, and that's a really good example partly on, on running these things. Thank you, Casper, for doing that, because I, I vividly remember every now and then uh, we recently talked about this one. Uh, 
we started doing office hours with BNP uh, when we started the BNP back in 2014, once a month. And uh, now we're doing quite a few community products every single week and then office hours on specific projects and all of that stuff. And the, there's say contributions and individual projects and all of that. And obviously they're all completely independent and they're doing incredibly well, like CLI for Microsoft 365. It's amazing open source example on how being executed in open source and how it's how widely it's being used. PMP PowerShell provisioning uh, search web parts. And then all of them are starting to have their own office hours and they're doing things because again, the mental mindset, I think, still is sharing is caring, and we're helping each other. Um, it's a small village, after all. It's a small club, oh, and yes. let's let's make sure that everybody is able to get their stuff deployed. So, absolutely, cool. I that sounded really philosophical. Wow, um, almost like I've written it down. No, I haven't. Uh, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so but thank you, Casper, as uh, joining, and thank you for all of the the awesome contributions. To what you keep on doing on the contra, uh, community side, because again. We, we as an, I would say the ecosystem is much stronger and it helps and benefits every single person working in the ecosystem as we help people to be successful within their work. Um, so it's, it's massive impact. Um, like you said, even though there was three persons who you explicitly held but on office hours, those three persons could have actually deployed their things to hundreds of thousands of people. And then we made hundreds and thousands of people more efficient within their work. And that's actually impactful. So small things um, and, and it changes the world for sure. That sounds really philosophical. Holy shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My language. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, quick recap within 20 seconds. What's going to happen in this week uh, or next week? Uh, anything interesting? What are you working on, Casper? Uh, anything much you can talk about? 20 seconds. Uh, 19, just, 18. Just, just. <laughs> Just the usual uh, provisioning, and uh, I have a few more workshops about uh, some in, um, information government, uh, information architecture uh, coming up uh, this week. So uh, it's it's we are in the autumn, and that's just basic uh, business as usual. Uh, yes. But I have so far I've been booked uh, through to March so far. So uh, I think uh, I. I kind of know what I'll be doing for the rest of the year. At least, so. yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, I, I will jump on immediately there and do my thing. I have no idea what I'm going to do today or tomorrow <laughs> because typically <laughs> stuff lands on my table. But, but you know, uh, I, same I, old, I, I might old. also have a, a, a change of plan. Usually yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. What is this? Okay, anyway. Um, we shipped uh, SPFX 1.18 actually yesterday, and we need to still work on, on some guidance and some other stuff. And there's a there's a lot of stuff getting shipped uh, related on post-powered Viva connection parts and the designers and all of other stuff. So we're prepping all of that. Uh, and then uh, I have no idea. Conferences are coming up pretty soon as well. I, I actually did oh, yeah. book my flights for the uh, spring conference already, which is a bit of a weird thing, but for whatever oh, reason, we needed conference. to do that. A Microsoft 365 conference in Orlando in end of April. So. So my, wow. I'm, I'm checking my, <laughs> it has, it has. be there, it's going to be awesome. And it's in Disney uh, Swan, uh, it's in Disney World. Uh, so it's going to be probably pretty cool. So cool. we'll have Donald Duck and all of the Mickeys. Uh, anyway, uh, so Waldeck. What are you going to do? <laughs> this week, this week we had, right? So this week we have the global Microsoft hackathon where we yep. experiment with stuff. So we're doing that. Uh, nothing to share in the open just yet. Maybe by the end of the week, maybe not. So we'll see about that. Um, with regards to things that I can talk about, oh, this is like filtering down. Um, we released actually last week, we released a preview version, new preview version of Microsoft uh, 365 Developer Proxy, and it's loaded with new features, right? So we support things like delaying a a connection so you could you'll be able to see uh slow re request and how your app works with that we uh release some other new like another cool improvement is uh, the ability to mock n3 re re requests so imagine that you call the same url three times and you want third response not to be the same right because and uh, the use case for that is imagine that you have a long running operation like creating a fire or creating a a, a connector, right? So when you create a schema, that is a long run, run, running operation that can take a minute or two or five, right? And the only way to know when it's done is to pull a URL that mm. will be in progress, in progress, and somewhere it will be done. 
Well, yeah. if you want to see how your code is going to handle that, you need to simulate calling the same 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 um, URL a few few times, and then the nth call is going to be done or failed. Yep. Yep. Right. So now we we uh, su support that, uh, and we have some other cool improvements too. So uh, if you build apps connected to cloud APIs, which if you are a developer, there is no way around it. <laughs> check out the proxy because it simplifies your life a lot. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And that is a really, really, really awesome project. Anyway, thank you, Casper, for joining us. Uh, you know, we were targeting like 30 minutes. This <laughs> never works. <laughs> but, I was sorry, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we're trying, we're trying. <laughs> but thank you, Casper, for joining us. And Waldek, uh, let's jump on the weekly articles within the show. <laughs> thank you, Casper. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Excellent. Thank you, Cosper, one more time um, on the uh, on the interview. See, uh, changing shirts on fly. That's actually pretty magical. So, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we, we might have actually recorded the interview a few days before the actual setup, but don't, let's not tell anybody. Don't. Yes, let's yes. Don't do don't explain how the magic works. Yes. Now let's jump on the weekly articles. And um, as we were chatting uh, before we got started, um, it's it's interesting. It's it's a bit quiet season. Uh, so I guess it means that people are busy. So yeah, everybody is back at work, you know, and people yep. are at work. Which yes, is a good sign in a way. Yep. That is a good sign. But let's start with a, a Microsoft side of the house, a few news from Microsoft, and then a few news from outside of Microsoft as well. First of all, on the Microsoft Teams blog, we had all about Microsoft Teams webinars, technical walkthrough, and live Q&A sessions from Teams Engineering. And this is actually really cool. I love these kind of setups because, again, it's not that we can we cannot share enough of details, how the features are intended to work and, and, and how they be work and all of that. And these are basically office hours where people can join and have a discussion with engineering uh, ownership, people who own these features in Microsoft for understanding how it's in them that to work and, and provide feedback. So really, really cool to take advantage of those. Then we had this one. We talked about this one a few times, um, but it's, it's basically Bing Chat Enterprise. It's an enterprise targeted Bing Chat, Bing Chat being Copilot, copilot kind of a thing. Chat GPT more, Chat I GPT, guess. yeah, in the price. And then uh, there are certain level of uh, user level admin controls uh, right now uh, being rolled out um, there so that you can actually control uh, the behavior and uh, to get more additional clarity on the on the Bing Chat Enterprise, which is actually really cool. So all kind of related. It's going to be interesting that even as a Microsoft employee, it's going to be interesting on Bing Chat Enterprise and then Microsoft 365 Copilot and how do they then you know, overlap and not overlap. And of course, the data is the same still, but uh, not quite. or is it? I, I, I or don't is think it? Bing Chat Enterprise has access to your work stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't, don't know. think it does. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. So anyway, so ad administrative controls now available in the Bing Chat Enterprise, which is cool, rolling out additional capabilities there. So this one actually from Bill Bear. Everybody knows who's Bill Bear, and I love the fact that he he keeps on changing his, you know, name. With it now, it's a Scandinavian. Bear. Yeah. The that that one over there. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing. We have the no. same thing okay. in Dutch, so I don't see like why. Yeah. Okay. Why, why is it claimed as a Scandinavian? It's like it's going to be German. Really, you do. Dutch. Okay, uh, fair point. Fair well, point. We we at least no. use it constantly, even in mother. No, we actually don't. Word. We actually yeah, don't, so. don't, don't, don't. Yeah, we do it. We do it on the e and the and the i. We don't do it on the on the a. Okay, there we go. See, see. <laughs> yes, sorry, it's Scandinavian. You're right. You're yes. right. So uh, from you the <laughs> from the designing of your office to the the, the language to languages yes. in the word world. So anyway, there's a new version of SharePoint Server uh, for on-premises. Uh, this is the SharePoint Server subscription edition. Um, and that's basically, we're moving away from having a, a big big versions uh, for on-premises. So it's basically evolving the subscription edition. And the latest version is September 22 or 23H2. I guess that's the right way apparently now to say that. And there are new capabilities within there. So that's all cool. Uh, for those who are still on on-prem or who have to be still in on-prem because those are legal, might be some legal implications there. Um, 
Viva people science industry trends. Uh, so going through the Viva blocks uh, on the Viva block we had, uh, this is really around the, the insights on the, the science or the, the interviews and investigations. What are the studies? Research. Research. Thank you, Waldek. So it's good that you are in the I'm, show because, you know, I'm the, yes. I just, yeah, exactly. So yeah. adding value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we non-native English speaking persons, no. Anyway, um, so, but it's basically research outputs and, and outcomes uh, related on what, what's currently in top of mind for the, for the people, which is actually really good. So I, I love the fact that we are investing as Microsoft also in empl employee experiences from a business data value perspective, which is really, really cool. Good, good, good. Um, then uh, moving on to the side, uh, we had this one from Reed Kalfrick from the Microsoft Syntax blog. Uh, file and document management considerations for enterprise B2B SaaS startups. What? <laughs> so if you are, hold on, if you are a startup in the enterprise B2B space and you have a SaaS yes. solutions, Correct. these are the things you should take into account Correct. with regards to files in your app. Yes. That's what it means in practice. So, in other words, if you tap in, if you build on top of these building blocks, you can build your app more easily and be more easily compliant. I guess. Correct. I guess that, that yes. is really T TLDR. Yes. Yes, that's the DRDR, uh, absolutely. Because again, we're talking about the syntax repository services where the data is being kept inside of the customer tenant, and that's a really key uh, capability there. So rather than you taking an ownership and aligning your systems from a compliance and security perspective with all of the standards within the world or whatever they are, um, you can actually keep the content inside of customer tenant and, and constant focus on your functionality, which is actually, the, the, I, I love the feature. So, and you don't, don't need compliance, you don't need disaster recovery, you don't need backups, you don't need security, yep. Like, you, yep. like all of that is given to you. Like just yep. imagine Absolutely. how much dev time you just cut. One hundred percent. Really, really cool. Now, on the developer side of the house, we had a team of teams recording and transcript APIs billing in public preview. Uh, so that's actually really, really cool uh, to know as well. So that's rolling out. And and again, as you're accessing, for example, recording information, transcript API, uh, transcript information, there is a cost associated to those things. And this comes back on something which we talked about in the past as well. We will definitely not have a cost associated to all of the APIs and baseline APIs. But again. This case, we are talking about humongous amount of data. So a lot of, lot of, you've got a massive amount of data and information. So there's a cost, a cost associated to that to balance out the cost also for Microsoft. So yeah, but still, like the cost is what? Like imagine you have an hour long meeting and then you want to get a transcript for that. Yes. Then it, that costs you one dollar twenty cents. Is that if my math is right? I guess so. Yeah, like that's it's. Is it really that much? I don't know. I, yes, there is a cost associated to it, yeah. but yeah. you know, like given the alternative that you would need to download the recording, upload it somewhere, process it, yep. get it back. Like, yep, true, sure. true. Sure. Well, again, it's a design decision for yep. the ISVs and vendors who are looking into these kind of scenarios as well. So that's yep. really really cool. Now, and then the other uh, big announcement on the developer side was the SharePoint Framework 1.18 uh, with updates Ooh. to Microsoft Teams and Viva and SharePoint, primarily actually on Viva Connection this time. Um, so there's a full flexibility on the Viva Connection card layout uh, options. And I, I actually did, I had to include a proper set of, you know, a different new designs which are available starting from this release. So you can actually have this flexibility of asking insights and, and all of that stuff directly within a card level. So, that is really which cool. Is cool. That is, and then so when you enter that, what is the next stage? Like, where where does that take you? Uh, depends on your implementation. So you can open up a quick view. You can uh, redirect the person to somewhere else. You can do whatever whatever is needed within your Sweet. implementation. That's really cool. So, again, providing more flexibility on those dashboards, um, which is a highly requested feature uh, within yeah. the Viva Connection, so which is really, really cool. And we also even have a demo video related on what's available, uh, which we recorded while back in the community club. So have a look on that, really, really cool as well. Now related, actually, well, how, what, what just happened? You pulled it down out of the window. Why, why did I pull it down? Fat fingers. <sighs> I'm, I'm going to just put it back in uh, because I want them to be in order. There we go. 
order is important. Well, yes. Like. Yes. <laughs> or no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyway, related on Viva Connection and SPFX, uh, there's a new community-led uh, Viva Connection Toolkit version 2. Adam Wojcik has been leading this. Um, it is actually a really, really cool capability. It's built on top of CLI for Microsoft 365 and the out-of-the-box uh, Microsoft provided the, uh, SPFX human generator. So it's an abstraction layer on top of that. And with this one, you don't need to remember any of the command line calls, any of that stuff. It's basically an abstraction on top of it. And you can start from a sample. So you can do all of those awesome things super easily. And Adam has been doing an awesome, awesome job on, on uh, evolving uh, this toolkit. So awesome, awesome work. Cool. That is really cool. Now, simulate rate limits in any API with Microsoft 365 developer proxy. Waldek. Yes. Almost every API in a cloud has this idea where like, it, it has a limit. Like, you cannot use it without a limit because you share it with others. It's, after all, an API in a cloud, right? So you yep. have a subscription or a plan that gives you the, the room to call it so many times in a period of time, given maybe a day, maybe an hour, maybe a minute, and so forth and so on. And when you call it too often, your app will fail because it will be blocked as saying, hey, you call this API too often, you got to wait. Problem is, how do you simulate that so that in your code you can take into account that? Like one way is to hammer the API to get to the error so that then you can get the error and see the behavior. The problem with that is that you're kind of, you know, forcing additional load on the service and API builders don't appreciate that because you're hammering the service that they build, yep. right? So we feel like, hey, we can offer a better way for developers to test that, simulate that on their own box. So you can now simulate error on any API you want. Like we have uh, presets available for Microsoft Graph, GitHub API, Recent API, and you, you you can implement any other API if if you like. And basically, yep. with that, you've got the ability to test how your app will react to it when you either get really close to the limit or even exceed the limit. So you can simulate yep. all of that, and with that, build better, more robust apps and give the customers way better experience because your app will not miserably fail. So if you build any AP, any app connected to a cloud API, and you probably are, because nowadays it's hard, hard to imagine building any app without an API, True. you need to ch check this out. True, absolutely. Really, really cool. And again, it's any API, which is actually the important piece as well. So it's not yeah. just for Microsoft 365 um, side, so which is really, really cool. Now, related on that one, you also released a few new samples, right? So uh, exactly. just to showcase what's possible. Exactly, right? So another thing that we want to show is we want to give you entry point, like a point to start from for different things that you, you could use Microsoft 365 Developer Pro Proxy for. So we offer you samples for, hey, like if you want to test uh, throttling on Microsoft Graph, we have a pre, pre, preset on that. Imagine you use the recent a, um, API to send emails in your app. We have a, a, um, a, a config for it too. So basically giving you an easy place to start, and but, but also a reference point. If you wanna build something else and it's not in our docs, maybe that sample will give you a better place to start so that you don't start yep. from a blank page but you have some code that you can adjust to your needs and off you go. Yep, absolutely. Really, really cool just stuff. Uh, stuff. Uh, English is so hard, Baldock. English yeah. is hard. Now, moving on on the on the journey, uh, 365 Message Center show uh, had a episode 300 and why? Uh, 301. Why is why? English so hard today? Why? Why? Why is English so hard? Uh, SharePoint News and Outlook in uh, yeah, yeah. and Viva Engage. <laughs> campaign um, and basically the latest in the message center so for administrators but there's a lot of lot of insights on what's coming up in the Microsoft 365 and so this is a great show on staying up to date what's actually happening uh, for Viva Answers and Viva Engage and Viva Topics and all of that stuff so really really cool stuff uh, rolling out and they're talking always about those new announcements. Now, user Royne uh, had a really good blog post related on Microsoft Chat Copilot versus Azure Chat GPT, which is generative AI capability to choose from the end of, for the enterprise. So these are the ones which are currently available because the Microsoft 365 Copilot is not yet available, uh, but that's coming up um, at some point. Yes. Some point of a time, some yes. point. It's coming up on beep, 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 beep. Did you just share the date in Morse code? Yes, <laughs> that, oh would my God. that would oh be my really God. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
What? You what? Say, no. <laughs> now we need to go back and check what have, what have you actually said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a Wednesday. Uh, yes. But yeah, so basically, uh, if you are building um, uh, Azure Chat Copilot or Azure Chat GPT, um, what would you? What are the options and what are the the implications of the choosing better? Thank you, Yusuf, for explaining that and and the differences between them and and what's your conclusion out of that that option as well. So a lot of lot of interesting and insights on on people starting to use these things for sure. Good. Um, then on the Microsoft 365 voice, uh, there was a, a good uh, recent episode where with Viva Amplify with Liz Sundet. So Viva Amplify is going to go GA relatively soon, um, sooner or later. I guess that's the right what way of saying that. What is Viva Amplify for those who don't know? Viva Amplify is really designed for corporate communications. Uh, so you can actually control and create campaign style communications and, and control where those communications are then being published. Uh, including SharePoint and Teams and, and other systems, Engage, uh, Viva Engage, Yammer, and, and other systems as well. And then you are able to also see more insights on the the, the views and all of that stuff through the Viva Engage as well. Um, so that's actually really, really cool capability, which is rolling out uh, relatively soon. So new, new, new capabilities there. That's and cool. they're talking about that uh, with uh, Liz Sandet, who is from Microsoft, helping with the Go Live uh, activities with Viva Amplify. On the PSS Tech Bytes, episode 262, uh, handling throttling exceptions with Microsoft Graph SDK for .NET, a uh, really, really important um, thing to understand as well. Uh, when you're writing stuff, please take advantage of Microsoft Graph SDKs, and this is for SDK for .NET. And of course, you need to be able to handle exceptions, super, super important uh, thing. On the Shane Young's blog, no, no, thank you for YouTube Premium, YouTube thank you. YouTube channel, not blog. <laughs> And the, the Mondays, Mondays, Monday, just, just Monday. Monday, yes. Uh, Shane has a new video on five things every Power App beginner needs to know. So again, could, could go back in the basics um, because it's incredibly important for the new people to be able to get started on, on things. And then reference, of course, more advanced scenarios. So it's forms are fine. interesting for because I'm right, seeing uh, six tips. Yeah, I can, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's he's under sharing a bit over deliver. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on April Dunham, uh, there was a Power Platform Copilot environment set up um, because the Copilot is already available in the Power Platform. So how you can actually start using that um, and develop solutions faster. Uh, so really, really cool. And then the last video was from uh, Juliana De Luca, how to use modern controls in Power Apps. And Juliana, congratulations from passing another million views within your YouTube channel. So there was a recent social media post from him uh, around that. So a lot of, lot of views, millions and millions of views. But really, really cool. I think that's it for now. So we yes. already went through uh, what's going to happen this week. Last week we went through that. And this is this week and then next, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> on that bombshell. Let's get back on work. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. Please use hashtag BMP Weekly if you are in X, Twitter, uh, whatever we call that nowadays. Uh, so Steve. we can actually catch up on Steve, Steve, so we can catch up on what's actually happening. People are writing so much and creating so much cool content and we would love to cover those uh, in the show as well. But thanks for this one. We'll be back within a show within a week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.